Hey, what's up, everyone? I want to thank you for tuning in to episode nine of the Hotel Havoc podcast. Today, I'm talking with Pekka. Pekka, you may recognize from his Vatnik Soup tweets and videos that he puts up on the Soup Central YouTube page. He's been fighting against propagandists for a while during the Ukraine-Russian war. It's really a great chat. Again, thank you for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy. Okay, Pekka, good morning, man. How you doing? Well, good here. How are you? Good, good. Well, good afternoon to you. You're in a little bit of a different time zone than I am right now. <laughs> All right, so Pekka, uh, again, man, thanks for joining me today. Uh, we've been talking for a bit back and forth, and we know, I know we had some – obviously, you have a lot going on where you're at, and, I, <laughs> and I'm sure it makes scheduling a little bit diff- difficult, but, uh, you know, as always, I appreciate you for joining. So – um, I just wanted to start off. Tell me a little bit about you. Uh, you know your background that you're comfortable sharing. Just you know where you came from and you know where you think you're going. Essentially. Um, so, uh, yeah. I'm, first of all, my name is Pekka Kallionemi. Uh, can be the surname, especially can be a little tricky for non-Finnish speakers, but. Uh, my background is in research, so um, I finished my PhD in interactive technology in 2018. Uh, today, uh, I focus my my research mostly focuses on on disinformation, uh, information operations, especially Russia, but I also do some research on China's information operations uh, and social media, of course, because that's basically where I also. Uh, kind of promote uh, my work. But yeah, I come from research. Uh, and that's basically almost all of my life I've been I've been involved in in, the, in academia. So uh, I'm kind of used to doing uh, fact checking and that kind of stuff. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's got to come in handy for what you've been working on lately. And uh, <laughs> I got to ask, like, how, how did the Vatnik soup even get started? Like what where the name come from? You know what? What really spurred you? Because I, I, I didn't even. See, I've seen some of your videos with the uh, where you're in the the chef's the chef outfit and <laughs> in the kitchen. Like where'd that all come from? <laughs> okay, I have no idea. Okay, but uh, <laughs> so uh, the whole thing, the the Twitter threats or X threats, whatever they are, um, it started. I started doing them more mostly for myself. Because uh, I realized that a lot of uh, the disinformation and uh, kind of a war propaganda related to Ukraine was coming from uh, some specific accounts. So uh, in, in academia, they're called super spreader accounts. So uh, if, you, if you probably one of the best known super spreader account at the moment is Jackson Hingle. So a huge following and uh, a lot of these uh original narratives come from these kind of super spreader accounts. And uh, I started uh, kind of looking into them first in, 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 in the scale of Finland. So I, I looked at Finnish uh, so-called super spreaders and uh, who are mainly responsible for uh, pro-Kremlin narratives and propaganda in Finland. Uh, I, I quickly kind of got a list of names and I started researching them a little bit and I uh, I realized that most of the Finnish discussion revolving around uh, uh, the Rus- Russia-Ukrainian war uh, came from these accounts, especially the, the, the pro-Kremlin uh, discussions. And uh, I thought, I thought that it's always the same discussion. I was, it, it felt like I was in the the movie The Groundhog Day because it was yeah. always the same narratives. It was always the bioweapons labs. It was always the genocide and uh, shelling of Donbass for eight years. It was always uh, so NATO expansion. It was always the same, same narratives and Minsk Accords. Uh, and I thought that it's this, it, see, it doesn't seem organic. And I started looking more into these people and uh, I, I decided, okay, I'm going to do these mini threads on, on Twitter uh, because I, 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 I had seen them being quite popular on Twitter before. So I, I thought, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a go. Uh, it was surprising. It went surprisingly well. It was quite popular. The first one, it's about Finnish propagandist Janusz Putkonen. 
And uh, I thought, okay, I'll do it with, again tomorrow. I'll try it again. Let's see if it's just uh, like a good luck or something or algorithm was just being nice to me. And then they were quite popular. Um, and I thought, okay, I'm going to do this as long as people can't read them. And uh, yeah, here we are one year later still doing bucket <laughs> yeah, well, soups. Yeah, and they're uh, they're getting better and better, I'll tell you that. Um, it, it's It's interesting. So you were saying that, uh, and it was in Finland that you were seeing a lot of the same, the same narratives back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. A- out of curiosity, with the ascension to NATO, ha- have you seen or heard different? Has the narratives shifted at all from what you were hearing beforehand? Uh, not really. the o- The only only thing that's changed is that these actors are. Mm, they've lost their powers. Nobody well, gives a shit about them anymore, basically. Uh, and uh, I don't think it's because of Watnik Su, but I, I think it's because Finland has been very good at teaching uh, media literacy and uh, kind of teaching about disinformation already in, 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 in primary school, even in kindergarten, you have stories about this kind of stuff. So the good education system gives a pretty good uh, I wouldn't say immunity, but resistance to this kind of uh, narratives. And of course, yeah, and of course we have we have history with uh, with the Russians or the Soviet Union. They they invaded us, uh, used the flag, false flag operation. They shelled their own people, and then they started to uh, invade Finland. So we kind of had the history is always always with us, and it hasn't been that long. Uh, but I forgot to also answer one of your questions. So where the name came from? For Vatnik Soup, I came from one user account that doesn't exist anymore. He just said that you need a name, you need a like a hashtag, uh, and uh, Vatnik Soup would be a cool name, and I, yeah, it sounds good. And then I just I, I just went with it, and uh, the chef's outfit. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I just Vatnik Soup. So, uh, but uh, yeah, no, there it's it good. It's great. It's great background. <laughs> it's a great background. I like the. Uh, I like the you have some moments they're they're like bloopers you know you're just you're just kind of goofing off a little bit before or after and they're 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 great but the videos themselves are very uh, they're they're very funny and um, you got good information that's coming out of there so uh, but you've had some you've had I think you've hit every single big account I mean I, I can't think of any that you've missed lately and I I, I was kind of curious you know looking through the list that you've done I mean. Some of them, some of them, everyone knows. Like you mentioned, you mentioned Hinkle. Like you, you don't even need to talk about him to an extent because everyone knows him at this point, unfortunately. But I was curious: do you do you feel like the majority of the ones that are based like in London and here in the, in the states, and you know, people like that? You got like armchair. You got folks that live in the United States, but are extremely, um, you know, extremely pro-Russian narratives, that's what they're putting out right now. Do you think most of them are true believers? Or do you think that they are simply taking advantage of an opportunity? Grifters? Like, what do you, what do you think? And, and you can use some examples if you like. Uh, I would say that a lot of them are motivated by money. There are definitely true believers. And, of course, these can be combined too. Uh, I also feel like a lot of people are have bruised egos. They've been maybe let down by their own country, the, the United States or, or United Kingdom. They may, may, maybe feel like, for example, we have example we, we have people uh, who have served in the U.S. military and kind of, what's the term? Is it uh, when you cannot really make rank, higher rank anymore? Like you, you, your career is stalling, kind yeah, of. They, they peak a little bit or they don't peak at all. They just kind of yeah. hang out. So, like Douglas McGregor, uh, Scott Reader, uh, and now uh, Tyler Weaver, aka R- Armchair Warlord, something <laughs> <Yeah>. like that. <laughs> yeah. So basically, uh, I feel like maybe maybe they they feel like they've been kind of let down, uh, disenfranchised in their own country, and being let down by their own country also. So they kind of take it take it all against. Uh, yeah, I definitely agree. Their government with that. after that. Yeah, especially for the military officers. That that was that's been a really really weird one for me, you know. But at the same time, it does make sense. Every single one of those examples have a reason to. They do. They have personal reasons, but you know there may be ulterior motives there as well. But it's it's kind of strange. I mean, do you 
was that a shock for I mean you maybe not a shock for you because you kind of had some background and disinformation stuff but was has that been a surprise for you just the number of military guys from the west that are coming out and and, and gals actually with what's her name from New Jersey <laughs> um Sorry, Bill, or whatever her name was right uh, is that <laughs> been a shock Nina, for you? I think yeah um kind of yeah maybe maybe the 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 high number of, of this type of people but also yeah. I guess if you are being sent, I, I mean, these people, some of them probably have been involved in some some conflicts, uh, like actual war. Uh, I mean, it can change your perspective, I suppose. And uh, but it's very difficult to kind of figure out why aren't they trying to change their own country for the better rather than going with the the worst enemy of of like your own country and go with that and uh, like why do you sell yourself to that ideology uh, yeah. russia or or communist party of china or or whatever uh, so it, that's that's surprising to me well there is an i mean you know there is a narrative obviously more so on coming up with the election that you know us the us especially leaving russia to its or leaving ukraine to its fate is better for the country and that's like that's like a line that has been used a lot and it's you know obviously you and i would be on the same page that we would disagree with that but that's definitely a that's definitely a, um a narrative that exists and we're going to hear more obviously more and more of it um some of those guys that, that you've mentioned i i think there's a little bit of that you know but i think like you said i think a lot of it it's a grift um in in specific ex- specific yeah, oh my god specific ex- circumstances it is a uh, narcissism thing it's definitely a narcissism thing they just want to hear their own opinion get you know retweeted and shared and retweeted and, like armchair is one of the worst um i mean your your thread on him what was it two three days ago a couple days ago mm. um it, you know you had you had your receipts right you had your your screenshots you had your multiple screenshots of past statements that were all just blatantly wrong but even in even in his reply even in his retweet to you he still just di- didn't catch nothing nothing clicked at all um because he i think he even said he's like all all it showed was that my narratives were right and i was like dude you didn't re- i'm looking at it this is all wrong it's, <laughs> it's ba- i don't get it it's baffling you, you have to just be so far up your own ass that's the only way i can describe it that's it I don't yeah and it. uh and uh, we even left like i would say uh, dozens of example tweets uh, oh, for sure. like that there's so much more to go with and you probably even worse stuff than uh yeah. than would have been your longest like, uh, thread you've ever done just know you uh, have time for that <laughs> yeah 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 exactly like uh and uh yeah twitter is it kind of the, the whole thread system breaks after 25 posts right. so it's, oh that's but, true is that actually what breaks i didn't know that it it kind of breaks, so you can you can only put twenty five uh, at once, and then you can put one after that. Like, but I it see. doesn't read very well anymore. And I I've realized that uh, fifteen to twenty is the sweet spot. People don't really. If you look at the how like how many people are still reading at the bottom, it's it's not that much. If you have thirty tweets, uh, it's, it's too yeah, much. That's true. It does, yeah. After a while, you're like, oh, all right. And plus, you you do the unroll when you read the unroll, so. But, yeah, yeah. Just uh, start a sub stack if you have to do plus yeah. twenty five. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Has there uh, who who's been your favorite to to write about and put out there? I I think I'm I, yeah I think I'm gonna say Iron Mouse John because it's just so such an incredible uh, story. Uh, basically, do you know I, I am Ian Miles John? Uh, yes, unfortunately, I do. Still great, I think his his account name. So basically, he he used to be involved in this extreme uh, social justice movement uh, mm-hmm. of of like, well, there was this video game uh, kind of phenomenon, or, or how would you call it? There was there was some controversy in in video game developer among video game developers and gamers uh, about harassment of. of and he was he was involved in that but then yes. uh, and Gamer, he was Gamergate. like gamer get exactly and he was yeah. a big opponent of of putin uh still i think 2014 maybe even 2016 
and uh, you, you you check these old tweets and it's like Putin is an asshole and that etc. And then you see that it's like nobody gives a shit, nobody cares about his tweets, uh, and then he becomes this uh, anti woke crusader, uh, Putin's best buddy, uh, and suddenly he becomes quite big. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, he's been involved in this kind of grift for a long time, and and some at some point he kind of maybe figured out how to become noticed and how to get the engagement and. Uh, uh, to me, he seems like completely cynical person who has no kind of the, his only value is the the money value he gets from from his post basically. And um, but yeah, he's also a columnist for RT, uh, kind of doing this anti vogue uh, stuff. Uh, it, I I wouldn't go and read the columns; they're not very good. But uh, if, if you're interested, you can check them. Uh, but yeah, probably my favorite. Um, Another one, I would say Kim.com because it just became such a big, big thing. So that like him, him suing me, blah, like um, threatening to sue me. Nothing, of course, came out of it. And he was like posting, uh, tweeting that I'm looking for a solicitor in Finland. Uh, you get paid six months salary. So, uh, and I, it was so funny, though. I, it, <sighs> I can't I could not help but laugh because what was he going to do? Get you like extradited? to new zealand before he gets extradited to the states like what was his plan i don't it, <sighs> ridiculous yeah and he, he, he's actually he I, I think his mother is finnish so he's oh, half really? finnish yeah so uh, but the thing is that he didn't really under, he, he thinks that the the justice system in finland works like it works in the u.s probably like you can get huge fines and so on but you cannot really profit from a lawsuit in Finland. So basically the, the fines are quite small and it's, um, yeah, so it doesn't really work like that. But uh, I mean, what would he, what would he have sued you for defamation? I mean, what was the actual, you know what I mean? Like what, what would you even do? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think he had any any grounds. Uh, basically, what I did in this case too, was just refer to his own words and some of the legal documents, but yeah. Uh, and it, and he that, eventually he blocked me, uh, he, and the same happened with Ian Maestrong. He was trying to kind of do a counter thing, and but he couldn't, and then he just blocked me. So that's like the final move. It's always the easy answer. I mean, just maybe start with that. <laughs> if you, if, it's never gonna. It doesn't seem to go. I mean, you, like you said, you guys do a good job at uh, bringing in receipts. I mean, there's nothing in there that isn't backed up by an example or an image, a, a link, you know, to a statement being made. I mean, there's a, it's not just speculation. So kudos to you guys for that. But the, the reactions are really, really funny. Yeah. They're really funny. Yeah. And, and uh, to be honest, the, the, the moments when the account following has grown the fastest is when all these uh, controversial events happen. So, I mean, it's just, it's just kind of, reinforces the idea that um uh, this kind of hate farming or rage farming is, is a thing and uh people are drawn into controversies and this kind of drama and uh people want to see more of that so uh yeah if, if uh, i i think i could provide a hint for everybody who's who's going to be in the future editions of fatnik soup i i'm probably the best uh thing to do is just be quiet because uh, social media everything dies pretty quickly so uh yeah, yeah uh, engaging often brings more drama and, but. true true i mean what you what you're trying to do is just put out put out uh, a nugget of truth <laughs> at the very least if anyone is just scrolling through and wondering if someone's a valid source they can at least go back to yours and say oh well Maybe there's some reasons to doubt this information coming out, but it, to be honest, like the other side, the cynical side of my brain is like there are just there's so many out there that you can like you can attach uh, a, an image that's a, of an actual tweet or statement that they made, they'll still deny it like it just doesn't exist. I mean, there's just some people out there it doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything to, but I think um, I, like you said, I mean, d this information is is great just to tackle right then and there with. Um, some really solid proof of the statements, proof of anything, you know, proof showing otherwise. And then you just let it, you know, you let it wither from there. 
uh, it, it seems to seems to it's been good. It's been good to see because I, I didn't use I, the last time I remember using Twitter was a, like a decade ago, and it was just bad. Uh, when the first you know war in Ukraine kicked off in fourteen, it was just all Russian bots. I mean, there was nothing you couldn't find anything. It, it was it was crazy. And maybe it was on me because I wasn't really using it. I didn't really know where to look, who to talk to, who. To, I'm not sure. But then this time around, it's been very 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 different and i'm kind of curious uh, is that just me like have you noticed that the the response to bot farms and the response to all these like random narratives coming out of you know who knows where have you noticed it's been a little bit more uh aggressive from like the western point of view uh, I, again up till now i don't remember ever seeing a lot of pushback to the bots but now like you have like nafo you have or like many organizations like that that aren't actually organizations they're just people that just trying to push back on narratives. Did you expect that? Anything like that? Or has it been kind of a surprise? NAFO was a, just a complete surprise uh, to me. Uh, I, I was actually, I was in, a, I come from a kind of a different background when it comes to social media. I was, uh, in 2014, I was on a lot on 4chan. And it was probably even worse than, than Twitter <laughs> in many ways. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's so I kind of know how bad the environment can be. I've also been, um, to some extent, I've been going to uh, HN at some point, but uh, NAFO has been extremely powerful counter to all this uh, disinformation and program propaganda. I've, I've said it a hundred times and I can say it one hundred times more. I don't, uh, and also I, I've, I've said this before, but they also helped me grow. So NAFO as this, NAFO, NAFO, whatever is the, the correct pronunciation, uh, they kind of helped me grow in the beginning. Uh, so just kind of this decentralized network of, of activists, uh, I gained a lot of uh, followers from from that that and uh, also, yeah, I, maybe maybe I I didn't exploit the NAFO network, but it, no. it really it really benefited me, and I also tried to promote NAFO and NAFO individual uh, NAFO activists because of that because they helped me in the beginning, so I want to help them now, and uh, I think this is something that's also uh, the difference between if you look at Ian Mark Strong or and uh, any average NAFO activist. The difference is that Ian Miles Chong is interested in, in Ian Miles Chong, nobody else. Uh, you, look, you look at NAFO activists, they're always sharing uh, crowdfunding efforts, fundraisers, any kind of interesting posts. Uh, they're doing uh, bulking and this kind of like reporting trolls. And uh, so it's, 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 it's for Ukraine. Uh, they are altruistic rather than these uh, very self-centered grifters who are basically interested in them, themselves, like uh, Jackson Hinkle and Neil Marshall, probably the biggest, ex like the most uh, kind of evident examples. Yeah, and they had some very public uh, spats too, this big guy. I mean, they're like, especially when, um, because, you know, with everything going on in Palestine and Israel right now, there was a few that were going, they were button heads in public for a while. It was, it was interesting to see. Um, I don't know if that was indicative of anything. I mean, I think that was kind of par for the course, but um, yeah, no, but you're right. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't consider it exploiting or anything. I think it's, you're putting out information that, you know, that group of people and people that are interested in those same topics want to see. So it's, it's beneficial, you know, and again, you're, you're, it's, it's helpful to have something to go back to and say, nope, this is why this is wrong. And this is, this is why this narrative doesn't make any sense. And here's example and here's proof. So it's, it's great. And I think uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing more. Do you have any, I know you just posted one this morning that I haven't gotten to or this morning for me. Um, I haven't gotten to read it yet, but do you have any, uh, any very interesting ones coming up that you're excited about that you want to spoil or do you want to keep those a secret for now? <laughs> um i can i can i can talk about the future future stuff no problem um so i'm I'm going to i've been doing quite a lot of research on this 
so there's this big movement in, in the States. It's driven by Tucker Carlson that uh, Zelensky and, and uh, his kind of uh, government is uh, fighting against some of the churches in, in Ukraine. So like forbidding them to do basically anything. Uh, and they've been pushing this very aggressively because they probably want to affect uh, the voters on, on the matter. So, uh, as, as we all know, in the United States, religion still plays a very large role uh, and kind of this uh, anti-Christian uh, approach. They're kind of trying it and it's working uh, like surprisingly well. So, And there is this uh, so-called union that's a bit shady and they they've been basically behind the whole whole movement so and they've been working with Carlson so there's going to be a I think it's going to be interesting so uh, when that comes out but it requires quite a bit of uh, research yeah so if you look yeah. at Tucker Carlson's latest uh, episodes I don't know what they're called his his propaganda pieces uh, they they focus around this uh, religion and how uh, Zelensky and Ukraine is forbidding uh, some some kind of like uh, orthodox churches, which are basically uh, they are directly connected to the Kremlin. And as we all know, the the orthodox church in 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 Russia is closely related to KGB FSB operations. So basically, it's been used for espionage for a long time. So they probably have a good reason to actually close these uh, churches but uh yeah they don't just tucker carlson and uh his friends they spin it somehow that it seems like it's this um i'm looking for the word but uh persecution mm-hmm. yeah of, no, of, of, of uh, christian figures and priests and so on so that's probably the biggest research we're doing right now That'll be an interesting one. I, I'm I'd be very uh, I'm gonna look forward to that one. And you're right. Unfortunately, religion is still a even uh, again when when Israel started off. I think there were a few politicians. Uh, I'll let you take which guess which party they were part of. But they put out like they had a, a couple of them I retweeted basically saying, "Well, Ukraine isn't in the Bible. Ukraine's not in the end times." And then there's like in in my when I grew up, you know, I grew up in a smaller country town area. Very, very Southern Baptist. I don't know if you've ever heard of Southern Baptist, but they are very big believers in, um, you know, the end of times and what that looks like. And it all centers around, you know, Armageddon that takes place in Jerusalem, in Israel. And a lot of them interpret these two names. I forget what they were called. Gog and Magog, I think is what they're called in the Bible. They interpret them as Russia and either China or like Iran. Like they've, they've tied these like ancient names from the Bible into these, into countries that exist now. So the irony behind that, that never made any sense to me though. They were like, we have to support Israel because, you know, Israel's in the end times and to be on Israel's side in the end times means that we'll be okay, I guess. I don't really know. And then they use that as a justification to not then support Ukraine to an extent, which doesn't also make sense because again, if Russia is this big villain in the Bible, wouldn't that also be the villain in Ukraine? You know what I mean? It doesn't like, there's just like this whole weird, but there's so many different bits and pieces of these like sects of Christianity that it's impossible to pin it down just one and focus on it. There's just so many branches. So, um, but you're right. Again, you're right though, that there's way too much mixture and why the Bible is used for justification for things is it's a question as old as the country itself. So here we, here we are. What can we do? (laughs) All I can do is keep talking about it and trying to make ask questions and you know maybe question some some thought processes and hope hope it opens the mindset. But a lot of that too, man. I think is I think that's also a grift. I think they know that their voter base are super religious, so they're just going to take mm-hmm. advantage of that. And that's it. They don't they don't care. They're not <laughs> they're not religious at all. You know, it's just uh, if if you look at the, uh, if you look at the of the super churches or this kind of uh, things in, in the states, and uh, it's like uh, it's not very to me. It doesn't seem very Christian when you just build these huge temples and uh, what, swimming pools and tennis courts and uh, like living this life of luxury. But uh, yeah, uh, I'm not an expert on, on <laughs> religion, so uh, 
but well, no, uh, you don't have to be an expert on religion. I think you're you're right. There was a there was a mega church that they legit said that God wanted them to have like a private jet or something, and they're like, we need yeah. this much money, and they raised it. It was crazy. Mm. Yeah, mega church. Yeah, that's the, that's the term. Uh, can I ask you how do you see the upcoming election? Uh, anx- anxiously, very very anxiously. That's the way I see it. I think it's, um, I don't know. I, I just don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I, I don't, I don't know. Obviously, you know, Trump's the front leader for the Republican party right now. He has what 30 indictments going on all at once. I, I, I'm assuming, I don't know if he's going to get charged or arrested. I, I have no idea. So I'm going to assume that he's going to be the Republican candidate just because we shouldn't assume otherwise, you know, uh, he could, he could go through all these trials and, and nothing happens. That's just the reality. And that's very possible. Um, I, I, obviously, Biden is going to run again, I assume. Um, you know, he's got his strengths and weaknesses as well. Uh, obviously, I think from the Ukrainian standpoint and really the the NATO standpoint, just from where I'm sitting, obviously, one option is a lot worse than the other. <laughs> I'll let everyone else speculate on who is who, but. Um, I'm a little more anxious about just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm anxious about the average person that we keep seeing, um, online, either the terminally online people or those that are even making threats in person. You know, those, those same people that got a little too carried away, uh, back in January 6th during that whole, you know, little, whatever happened there. Um, I'm nervous about them. If Trump lost again, I think there'd be, it'd be a, it'd be a whole, mess you know from that but obviously we can't prevent that i think the the longer term problem i have is that you cannot have a conversation now about elections or uh even even trials it doesn't matter every everything is corrupt now so trump could win and they obviously wouldn't say a word but the second he loses if he loses it's oh well the elections are fraud everything is fake um we're living in a dictatorship, that kind of thing. So Trump could be found guilty tomorrow on all these indictments. Well, the the jury was stacked against him. Uh, the DOGA is corrupt. But on the same side, Trump yesterday, basically not yesterday, this past week, put out like a list of people he's going to target if he becomes president, which to me sounds like a corrupt D- Department of Justice, right? <laughs> um, so I, I'm really, I, I'm more nervous about the... Uh, the bipartisanship the split. It's just very, it's very, very split right now. And it's mostly, you'd know better than I would. I mean, a lot of it is blown out of proportion, right? You see the, like you said, you see this stuff that's going to go negative. That's, that's what shares fast online because good stuff mm-hmm. doesn't, um, you know, you and I, like I have, you and I could be having a conversation like this and it's great. You know, I have, I have friends of mine that are the complete opposite side of the political spectrum. Um, we talk every day and we disagree a hundred percent, like a hundred percent, nothing. There's no agreement. One, I can think of like one friend wants to get abolish NATO entirely and abolish the U S military entirely. Obviously we disagree very strongly on that, but him and I are still really good friends. We can still talk through stuff like that and get to the end. And we're, that is not what we're seeing. You see online, you don't see that. You just see some ultra mega 2024, you know, say something horrible to someone and then you see, you know, them get a reply that's just equally vicious, but you know, a little bit different. I, I don't know. It, I'm trying to, I try to stay positive about it, but it's tough. It's tough. I mean, election year sucks here. <laughs> I might go to <laughs> Finland actually. I'm, I'm thinking about, <laughs> I'll just go over there and camp out for a while. You're always welcome. Uh, yeah, I appreciate it. When, when I'm when I'm there, uh, you're always welcome to. Uh, I'll, I'll show you around. I'll book the ticket. And I've always wanted to go though. I I do legit uh, legitimately want to go to to Finland and just Scandinavia in general at some point. But uh, my last trip to Europe was just uh just to Ireland. But I got I got to spread out a little bit more. I haven't had the opportunity to do that yet. Soon, maybe yeah. maybe come January and the I'll, next year I'll I'll be there. Yeah, just let me know in advance and uh, I'll book the tickets too. Uh, but yeah, about about the the uh, like social media and interactions, also online interactions, it's it's missing uh, a lot from. It's it's not human interaction in my my view. It's like it's it's this. It it 
lacks this essential part of human interaction, like uh, this face-to-face uh, communication and us being like uh, this nonverbal communication. And uh, it's this it's this very cold, hard approach to having discussions. You don't see any emo- emotion from the other person, and it's it's very provo- provocative and uh, it's very polarizing. And uh, it seems that when people are online, especially anonymously, uh, they they post the most extreme takes on everything, and it's it's ex- extremely controversial. And uh, we also tend to react the strongest to this kind of take. So you you take uh, this. Uh, provocateurs like uh, Ian Miles Chong or, or Jackson Hinkle, it's uh, we still we are drawn to these kind of people because we even 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 those who kind of oppose uh, their thinking and worldview, we are drawn to them because we they're like so controversial. They're such an assholes that we just have to go and see what they've been posting today, and this yeah. is how they make this is how they make their money. Is is basically true. this. Uh, and this is why Tucker Carlson is such a big character. Uh, he's very controversial, and uh, he probably doesn't believe one hundred percent that he's saying. He's even even uh, admitted it himself uh, on on this law on this um, lawsuit on this uh, election stuff. He admitted it, um, and uh, he's just basically for the money and for the fame and I don't know attention, whatever is the, the motivator there, ego. It is pretty wild, though. I mean, he he literally was quoted as saying that that was well, that was related to the election, wasn't it? That he they were talking about like Fox pushing that the election was stolen, and most of the Fox executives were like, "No, no, it wasn't," or "We know it's not," but they pushed it anyway. It wasn't that that was like the whole shebang? Like you said, he got quoted saying stuff like that. People still just buy everything he's saying. I'm like, dude, he he admitted that he is saying it for the sake of the the audience. Not a true believer, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just the words, you know. They just read the words. That's people it. don't care. Yeah, people don't no. care, and uh, they they they'll just say that. Uh, I mean, it's a conspiracy or something like that. It's it's. Yeah. Uh, they they'll they'll make something up so that their whole whole worldview doesn't crash and burn. So they kind of have to explain the thing so that it sounds reasonable and rational themselves so uh, right. yeah but it's this um, like yeah, I've been talking about a lot about this like cognitive warfare so we are it's more about battle of the minds uh, and uh, I still feel like there's a lot of people uh, who with proper education and informing could be turned to think differently and uh, I think um it's perfectly fine to be kind of skeptical in your thinking and always kind of try to find a rational in things. Uh, and this kind of thinking, critical thinking should be taught to everybody. Uh, so it's, it shouldn't be like, okay, Donald Trump or, or Joe Biden says something and that's, that's the truth. That's the absolute truth because it's, it's come on, it's Donald Trump or it's Joe Biden. Uh, or, but we should have a critical approach to absolutely everything. Uh, but without resorting to conspiracy theories or like we, there should be evidence also. Yeah. Well, critical, critical thinking is hard. <laughs> it takes a lot more time. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. It's much easier to just take things as they are given to you and just go with that. Yep. It's what can you do? What can you do? I, I, I did start changing how I respond. You're right. Cause I think at some point, a lot of it was just, you know, like Hinkle was one of the worst. I think he was purely baiting to get engagement. Like some, he'd say something like completely off the wall. He somehow managed to like, to offend like two or three groups at once, but it was such like a nonsense statement. I started to realize that that's all it is. It's just, it's just to push engagement. It's just to get people to hate click so he can start pulling an ad revenue. So a lot of them, I don't, I like will not, retweet anymore I, i've stopped doing it entirely all i do kind of like what you do is i just take screenshots so that way they, they get no traffic to that post i'm just i'm not doing it anymore mm-hmm. and uh it, it seems to be it seems to be helpful i mean i don't know but i'm hoping that I, at least for me personally i'm trying to avoid that at all i don't want them to get a scent even from me 
reading through it and just getting irritated. I don't even want them to get that. <laughs> but, you know, a few of them now I just kind of laugh at because we know who they are. We know they have nothing to offer. So you can sort of kind of just like let it go past you and not think too much about. But again, like you, you, you're doing, calling it out is still important. You should, you should call it out, especially if it's dangerous, dangerously wrong. Yeah, and I feel like what's what's important is to bring out the motives. Why are people doing this? Uh, because once maybe maybe somebody realizes that, that maybe Taco Culture or Jackson Hinkle or or whoever is doing it for money or to kind of feed their ego or uh, I don't know maybe they, there's some compromise on them uh, or compromising content. Uh, you kind of realize okay, where, where is this all this coming from? Uh, and uh, I've I've Sometimes I've written about this acronym called, uh, called MICE. Maybe maybe you know it. So uh, money, ideology, uh, compromise or compromising co- content mm-hmm. or like video material and ego. So MICE. Uh, and those, uh, I, I classify them as the main motivators, four main motivators for, for what makes, uh, in, in, why they do what they do. So... Basically, a lot of stuff you can you can explain this, and of course, they can be a lot of people can also be motivated by multiple things. So maybe ideology and money, or uh, money and uh, ego, uh, both can they go very well yeah. hand in hand. So that they do. <laughs> but yeah, I just I've been trying to kind of build a, a theory on this around this, uh, like how these people are motivated. The, the acronym itself, it comes from counter-espionage. So how the CIA used to kind of try and recruit uh, counter-spies or whatever they called, or, or spies in general. And uh, these four motivators were kind of mentioned there. Uh, it's the, the whole system has kind of outlived its its us, uh, usability in, in espionage, but I think it applies quite well to... Uh, this kind of disinformation and uh, propaganda spreading. Yeah, no, it absolutely does. There was a there was a, an acronym I don't remember now, but we we would get taught it, you know, during training, and just sometimes we'd have some annual annual kind of like refreshing training. And it was at the time it was like, ah, oh, you know, make sure that the the girl sending you a a, a, a Facebook for friend request isn't from ISIS or something. It's kind of funny in hindsight, but there were like. There were some really good uh, opportunities where they identified things that, like, if a soldier is struggling financially and all of a sudden they start buying new cars, if they've been passed up from a promotion and they are struggling financially, and like all these indicators basically that says like you need to you need to keep keep an eye out and make sure that you're not seeing anything that's unusual. And what the last um, couple months we've seen three or four, I think mostly Navy guys get arrested for uh, espionage to China or attempting attempting to sell stuff and it turns out it was the fbi undercover but but that is how they target people they target people exactly like that um so that it's a good acronym i, I wish i could remember what what we called ours but it's essentially the exact same thing just mm-hmm. look for opportunities and look for weak links in the chain and um because that's what our that's what our adversaries are doing and they're going to try to take advantage of it and you know usually with money that's number one uh so it's it's a perennial concept it's never going to go away but um well peck i tell you what i i, I appreciate your time today i, I kind of uh like i said i still have to read through your most recent one that you did this morning I'm, I'm i'm curious to see but uh any any last words of wisdom i suppose or anything that you want to um share that you want to bring attention to whether it's a charity or an organization or something like that Hmm. No, I, 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 maybe, I, maybe I conclude with uh, what I usually say in, in podcasts and uh, these kind of uh, events is that uh, people should sometimes get away from social media for a while, go to nature. I mean, I don't know, go fishing, go hunting, uh, just enjoy time with your friends and family. Uh, social media will always be there. It's not going to go anywhere and you won't die if you miss two days or three days of, of updates on, on breaking stuff. It's, I say this also for myself because it's difficult for me sometimes. Yep. Uh, and it's a very difficult, uh, sorry, it's a very different world uh, If outside social media. We have more of this like uh, natural human interactions and uh, spending time with your friends is, is 
you know, usually a, a good way to spend your time. Um, but yeah, let's let's keep up the good fight uh, for Ukraine and support them in, in any way we can. I think that's that's what we have to do uh, now and in the future. Yeah, no, that's great. Great, great advice about going outside, too. And again, it goes back to what we were talking about, where everyone online is spitting poison. But you take a walk down the street. People are friendly, <laughs> you know, go to the park. People are friendly. And that's you can have great conversations and they, they are a little bit more positive. So. It's great advice. I, I need to take breaks and I do when I, when I get opportunities and it, it's a huge help. I mean, I can't imagine just staring at all that, like I said, poison all day long. I think I would just lose my mind. <laughs> so, um, good, good feedback. All right, man. Well be safe over there. Um, I'm going to be obviously looking out for more of the that Nick soup episodes cause I've been enjoying them, but I appreciate your time. Um, and we'll be talking soon. I'm sure. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do this again sometime. Let's yeah. let, let's do like a long, long, th- uh, long yeah. recording. I'd like to get some others, uh, maybe some other folks that are doing similar things to you're doing. And I'd like to just almost do like a round table and and see you know how you all approach this 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 uh, method of combating disinformation. I'd be really interested to hear um, competing thoughts and ideas. You know, let's do it. And we all can right. we can invite Jackson Hinkle too. There you go, oh, man. That would be so. <laughs> oh man, I don't know. I'd have to mute myself though the entire time. I think I would just leave my camera on and just mute and drink probably and just listen to you guys. <laughs> just, I'll just MC. That's it. But that's a great idea. All right, man. Well, hey, I appreciate you again. Uh, be safe, okay? All right, thanks. It was great. <laughs>